Cinema 4D comes with a lot of tools and settings and tags, and it can be quite confusing, I guess, in the beginning to get a good overview over things. But anyhow, or even to get you a bit more better overview over things, uh, we tackle each topic um, one by one. And today I'd like to talk about deformers, which are a way to deform or modify your polygon objects. Um, well, it, they don't have to be polygon objects, actually, it can be any object uh, in your Cinema 4D workspace. There are quite a, f a lot of different deformers you can use to modify your objects, and not all of them are like very useful, um, but some are very case specific, so you can use them for a very specific task. But um, some of them are actually quite useful to modify your object in 3D space, and you can use them as kind of helper tools for your modeling exercises. So let's head to Cinema 4D and I will show you what you can use or do with the deformers. So the basic behavior of the deformer is that you put the deformer inside or as a child of your object you like to deform. So I just added the band deformer over here and as it always if you do a long click you can see the whole menu of deformers. So let's have a look at the band deformer. Um, in some of the deformers you find this button in your object tab fit to parent and what this does is it um, fits your deformer to the size of your object. So that ca can be quite handy but it uh, isn't available in all of the deformers. Now if I go ahead and change the strength of the deformer you can see something is happening with the cube but it's not really bending it, it's just like um, stretching it to the side. The problem is that the cube only has one segment, especially on the y direction. So as soon as I increase this, you see this is how we get the bending. And if I actually activate the lines here to see the edges uh, and go back, you can see actually how the bending is happening. So of course, we can also do effect like this. But if we want it to be smooth and round, we have to increase the segments. And yeah, the settings of the band deformer are quite simple. We have the strength and we have the angle. So I can also tilt this to the side a little bit. And as you can see, or you probably can imagine, you can do some quite fun things with this. Um, so if we would animate this, you actually um, put some life into this kind of simple cube only by animating it and make it jiggle around in space a little bit. Um, yeah, but we come to animation on a on a different episode. But um, so that's the general idea of the deformers that you put the purple thing as a child of the object you like to deform. Now there's a very useful deformer also when it comes to beveling the edges of your object. And beveling of the of the edges means it's the same thing as we done with the fillet of our cube. So as you can see, my edges of this, or the edges of the cube here are quite rounded and nice, but we can also do the same thing with the bevel deformer. And the bevel, as the name suggests, does beveling of our edges. <clears throat> Again, here we have to increase the subdivisions a little bit to make the edge nice and round. And there are quite a few different settings you can use and uh, maybe we have a look on another session how to use the selection for this. And you can be, you can define basically different kind of edges with different kind of um, roundings. And it's, so it's quite parametric uh, in a way. And also what's quite neat about this is as soon as I turn this into an editable, editable ob object, the bevel deformer is still there and I can still change the beveling of my object. This is not the case if you use the parametric object by itself uh, and you have the, the fillet activated. As soon as I turn this into a polygon object, it's baked into it and you cannot change the fillet option anymore. So with the bevel deformer, you have quite a non-destructive way of dealing with the beveling of your edges. And it's also quite automatic, so it's a nice little helper here to 
get this kind of rounding. There's another deformer which you can use to smoothen th things out. And let me use another object for this to make it a little bit more interesting. So let's say we have this kind of Ecosa platonic object. And again, you want to bump up the segments here uh, in order to make this work. Then um, you can use the smooth deformer for this. Put that in and you can play with the strength to define the smoothing of your object. And also it depends on how many segments you have on your object. So it's more like an overall smoothing effect rather than the edge beveling, um, but it can also be used to make something like a very polygonal object a little bit more smoothed out. All right, so then there is another one which is quite fun, but I, I think I haven't used it in many cases so far, but let me show it anyhow. Uh, again, let's bump that segments up, otherwise it won't work. We can activate the fillet, but we don't have to add a sphere. And what we like to do is we like to use the collision deformer. So sounds, sounds exciting. And we use the collision in the cube because we want the sphere to collide with the cube and the cube should be deformed um, by our sphere. Uh, as you can see, there's nothing happening so far. It's because we have to tell the collision deformer which colliders it should use. And you just drag and drop the sphere into this. Let's make this a little bit smaller and crank up the segments over here as well. And as you can see now, and uh, let me turn on something here to make it a little bit more visible. And that, that is, well, at least the idea of it is screen space ambient occlusion. And by that you get ambient occlusion shadow. This means you get contact shadow. And um, by this, yeah, you can see it shows you much more clearly how those two objects interact with each other lightwise. So yeah, we can now deform our cube and you see we can get some artifacts here, but um, that should be in some way at least resolved if we crank up the segments even more. Um, yeah, but as you can see, we can deform our object. And if I even hide this, you can also see that we could use this to actually the former object. Maybe I turn off the fillet for now. Does this solve this issue? No. Uh, I think probably you have to go very high with your segments in order to get a clean, clean cut over here. But um, yeah. And then as you can see, is as soon as you move your sphere inside of the cube, it actually um, yeah, kind of pushes out from the inside. So yeah, you can do some fun things with this kind of deformer. But as I mentioned, actually in real life, I haven't found much use of it um, from it, but uh, might be fun to play around. Okay, let's get to uh, like a real world example. And um, uh, let's say we want to add something to our T-can over here. And uh, a nice little fact, if you look from the top, Maybe you saw, seen, saw it or seen it if you uh, if you have had a look at the file. Um, I actually pulled out the wrong amount of polygons here from the back, so the handle is quite of twisted to the side. Um, might be an ergonomic benefit, but uh, I don't know. I doubt it in some way. So that was just a mistake by myself. Of course, usually that should have went out right from the backside here like on the front but anyhow let's say we want to add kind of a logo or emblem to this kind of t-can and let's design one very quickly so i think we go with a cylinder and we change the direction of the cylinder to the plus z direction and then we scale this down it doesn't have to be that big and also we want it to be quite flat, maybe something like this. Um, we could keep it round, but we could also, in this case, reduce the amount of segments to, let's say, 
six. Let's activate the uh, lines here for a second. Okay. I don't think we need as many line, uh, height segments here. All right, so that could be our logo. And let's make it editable. And I want to do a little inset here on the inside. So let's go to surface mode. Use your live brush selection tool to select all um, six of those surfaces on the front. And then we select the inset tool, click and drag to the inside so that we get this kind of inset. And then we use the extrude to extrude a little bit to the back like this. So this could be our kind of shape for our logo, which we like to put on our can. And let's use the bevel deformer for this. Uh, let's put the bevel deformer in here and let's reduce the offset and increase the amount of subdivision. So we can go pretty low here on those kind of things. Okay, so that might be our little logo. And the tool or the deformer we like to use now is the wrap deformer. The wrap will as the name suggests, wrap our object around another object, or rather it will wrap it on either a cylindrical shape or a spherical shape. In this case, we, we need the cylindrical shape and we can turn this around by 180 degrees. Um, let's move the logo right to the edge of our can and to the bottom, maybe down here somewhere. And then we go, I think, to the top view here, or to the split view, in order to see uh, and to align the bevel. So I move the, uh, the, not the bevel, the wrap deformer here to the front, and then I reduce the radius to actually 49 centimeters. All right, let's put it uh, under the bevel and Let's see. So you see it's squashed down a little bit. Um, let's have a look. I think it might have to do with the height. No, it's the width of our wrap deformer, which we have to reduce in order to get this thing going. Okay, we can move this a little bit further to the back, maybe about here. And as you can see, this now follows the shape of our can. I think it's still a little bit squashed, don't you think? All right. So that's it. We can hide the wrap deformer here to make it have a better look at our object. So yeah, this is how you use deformers and I hope you uh, found that interesting or at least learned and understood how we can use the deformers to help us in our everyday modeling. Because without the wrap deformer, it would actually be quite difficult or quite a pain or a lot of work to get this kind of shape following the shape of our cylinder. So that's a very neat little helper over here.